Back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. A man who shot to fame in 2006 on The X Factor. He's been working ever since, and that's the sign of a true star. Several albums at the top of the charts, and he's back in 2016 with a brand new tour this autumn. It's great to talk to Ray Quinn. How are you doing? All right, pal. Good. Very good. Thank you. Do you know, it must be marvellous to be you, because to be talented, to be successful and still in work, A, is very rare, but also it's a compliment to your talent. Well done. Oh, thanks, buddy. Wow, that's nice of you to say. It's not an easy business, is it? I mean, every day I talk to stars year in and year out, and to see who's surviving and who's not is really interesting. And sometimes there are incredibly talented people who don't make it. Have you tried to work out how you're still here when so many are forgotten? No, not really. I mean, I've never really sat and thought about that. I've just tried to just get on with it, really. <laughs> obviously, some some amazing opportunities have, have come my way, and I've managed to... Uh, conquer them um, um, I don't know really I just, I've just done it I've just done what I needed to do and at the end of the day I love what I do so I couldn't see myself doing anything else so I guess this is your life isn't it I mean you've never done anything else and this is all you've ever wanted to do and all, all you've ever wanted to be yeah absolutely I've never done anything else and I mean, I've done a bit of Barbara when I was 15 but that was about it <laughs> Uh, I did it for like four weeks, but no, I, ever since I was a kid, I started when I was three, dancing, growing up in the dance world, and then I started singing because I wanted to do that, but then I fell into Brookside when I was eight, and since then, I knew I could work, and I knew I could uh, earn, earn a living out of doing what I love, and I thought, well, this is what I'm going to pursue, and it's turned from a hobby to a life career, hopefully, and just get that longevity under my belt. That's all I, all I want. One of the things I find most fascinating doing West End reviews and then talking to people like yourself, there's very different skills between being a West End actor and being a stage performer in your own right. You've got to have charm and charisma and warmth and you have all of those things. Do you think that just comes naturally? When I look at where you were born and your upbringing, it seems to me that's sort of in you. You love the public, don't you? Yeah, I, I do, yeah. I am that type of... I'm a people pleaser. I'm a people's person. I always go out of my way to please others than, than myself sometimes because that brings me back more rewards. Um, and that's just who I am in, in a way, I guess. But when I get on stage, you know, my my inner child come leaps out and I'm like, I'm at home, I'm comfortable on stage. And I've always thought in my head, I've always been taught really as well, that if you make them feel comfortable... They're going to be a better audience for you. You'll have a better show and then you get a better outcome. It's going to be interesting this autumn. You've got two projects on the go. Uh, one is the No Man's Land tour, which we'll talk about in a second. And the other is Let's Hear It For The Boys, which is a fascinating gig with Jake Quickenden and Shane Ritchie Jr. too. What will you be doing? Will you be getting delicious and naked for the girls? Is that the point? Poster would suggest that because I'm the only one with me cut me top off. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, we'll be having a laugh. I think we're all doing a bit, uh, half an hour each or whatever. And um, just going to be a top night. You know, it's just a bit of fun with the boys. And to be fair, like me and the lads, we get on like a house on fire, all of us. Um, you know, Shane's my mate, Jake's my mate. We're all mates. So, um, you know, I think for me, I'm just looking forward to just having a laugh, really. And then obviously my tour starts. My tour is all my brand new music, all my original material. Um you know, the album's going to drop soon, for sure, but I wanted to get the music out there to let the fans hear, you know, what I've been up to. And I guess there's no better test of whether something's working or not than trying it with a live audience, because they'll tell and you'll see their reaction immediately. Absolutely, and we've done a couple of gigs already, and they've just gone down a storm, and my new material's really settled well with my fans uh, at the moment, and hoping to bring <clears throat> some more, if not many more in, you know, and... I've been working on the album for the last 18 months and uh, to, to be able to get a, an album together that I'm self-invested um, in, in in all aspects of it, um, in all sense of the word, to be able to have a finished product and be able to get out on the road with it, it's just very exciting, very, very exciting. I don't mean this question to sound facetious, but I wonder whether CDs are dead and whether music is dead in that form. It seems to me you can make a lot of money on the road if you're good at it and you're popular. Is anybody buying CDs anymore? I was just at the launch of a former X Factor winner just a couple of weeks ago, and she had this big do at the Dorchester, and the single didn't even chart. 
it blows my mind that people just don't seem to care about music anymore. What is it? They, they want it live. They want it downloaded. But actual physical sales are hard to, to get, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, unless there's that one song or it's instant or you strike while the iron's hot uh, or a big build up for some reason. But you see the, the likes of Ed Sheeran and all that, and people think his success was overnight. But it takes a lot of bloody nights to make it seem like an overnight success. Do you understand yeah, what I mean? I do. Uh, and it's all about the graft. And unfortunately, sometimes uh, uh, certain avenues aren't, aren't, aren't the best. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a tough one. It's a real tough one. Because even if you're really good, this industry's hard. Yeah. So and, and 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 so obviously if you're terrible, it's not going to happen. Um, and I've been working tirelessly, tirelessly on this this album, trying to get it uh, ready, mixed, and you know, because I wanted to be real. I wanted to seem real, and um, I don't know. Maybe CDs are you know, it's sort of dying out slowly. And times change, things evolve, people change, influences change. Yeah. You know, we can understand that. So it's about moving with the times. It's about using social media. And <clears throat> for me, I've learned that it, it's all about that and growing through the, what, what the times are now, do you know? We look at uh, the tour dates. The 3rd of September, you'll be in Yeovil. Then on the 8th at Preston, you go to Billingham on the 10th, Wolverhampton the 14th, 15th in New Brighton, and Rotherham the 17th. The tour continues. You can find out more by going to www.rayquinn.co.uk. Um, the last time we spoke was in Greece, and it is amazing how you've transformed not only your career, but of course your appearance since then. I'm fascinated by this because I'm a deeply unattractive man. I was a fat kid and have all that anxiety that goes with it I mean firstly congratulations it's remarkable when you look at the comparisons can you believe you were that guy before as you look in the mirror right now yeah I mean certain lifestyles and you know diet choices and everything else can get can get in the way can cloud all that you know and that's the reason why I, I was slightly larger uh, and obviously younger as well you know puppy fat and all that you don't come into yourself until you're about 25 and 28 now I was 28 yesterday and I guess uh, I, I, I've grown up very quickly from a young age you know I started work when I was 7 or 8 years old so I, I, you know I've always been in a working man's environment um, but never never gone oh hang on a minute what, 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 what about me here you know I've always played another role and then when you sort of come into yourself you go wow what, what, what is it I want to do for me and I think uh you know, personally, I went through a little bit of a, you know, up and down, and it was a focus for me to get, to get fit, to get better, to feel confident, uh, and and just know yourself inside out. You know what I mean? I go to the gym most days, and I certainly don't look anything like you. Is that just hours and hours in the gym, or what's the recipe? Because that's what most people face, isn't it? That sort of yeah. saggy skin look. You don't seem to have that. I was just like stocky. I didn't have until a sort of sat down and my belly went over my kex. <laughs> you know, I didn't look like I had rolls of skin, like like fat, do you know what I mean? Like, right. I wasn't a large guy, I was just overweight. So I guess that was in my favour. But for me, it's all diet. You can go to the gym as much as you like, but if you eat bad and you, you drink too much, or it's all about diet for me. You know, I can go, I don't have to go for the gym. If I don't go to the gym for a week, but I eat well, my body doesn't change. That's amazing. So just take us through your day roughly. Yesterday you woke up and you eat what, and then you end the day with eating what? What I've recently done in the last couple of months is exchange all my sort of starchy carbohydrates to essential fats with my salmon and broccoli for my lunch maybe, or fish, broccoli, or essential fats like avocados and things like that are fatty, but not carby. Because your body doesn't yeah. actually need carbohydrates. They're a false sense of security, like chips, crisps, pastas. Obviously, potatoes grow out the ground, but if you if you start filling them with butter and beans and cheese, you know, it's, it's carbohydrates like that that will just hibernate in your body. Right. So if you have essential fats, your body uses them, like nuts, things like that. Your body uses that fat as an energy. It's so confusing for people. I think because we've got this traffic light system on all the food now, people get very confused. They seem to 
confuse sugars with carbs with fats and they don't understand fat doesn't necessarily make you fat whereas carbs and use do it is really confusing for people yeah it is but i think you know i've all i've done I, you know i didn't have anybody put anything together for me i've i've, I've put together myself what i think's best for me from talking to other people and how they do it mm. you know and i used to i used to cone my carbs so basically i'd have loads of carbs in the morning and then cone it off right to the end, to the end of the evening, where I'd, all I'd eat after before eight o'clock would be protein. Mm. So I'd have, you know, whatever the carbs I wanted in the morning, like porridge or good carbs like that, you know, porridge, Weetabix, you know, cereal, whatever. And then quite happily have a bit of bread with a bit of this, that, and the other. And then pass it in the afternoon. And then, but towards the evening, just stick to protein, like meats or anything like that, like chicken, eggs, tuna. Right. And then, and that dropped the weight that way. But then, now I'm doing the essential fats and I see a better result. So I don't know, each individual is different. You know, my friend can eat what he wants, but he's got a natural physique. I mean, that's not Shane. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's it's one of those things, I think. You've got to find your own balance and obviously getting rid of, like, baggy, baggy skin, excess skin, that's mm. going to take a while. Have you noticed a difference in the way people treat you? Because it is amazing how we love beautiful people, and especially in this sort of celebrity-driven uh, world. Were you amazed by the pickup of the papers and the reaction online when you came out with this new body? Because, I mean, it was like a completely different person, and you'd redefined yourself with the tattoos and all that stuff. I think so, yeah. I mean, how to put this without sounding weird, like, you know, my family and obviously the fans and whatever when I'm going to do something out there like on the theatres I've always had admiration as to wasn't that great was a great show or whatever um, but it is a different admiration when you know you, you notice for looking well all I know in myself like I'm not bothered about the att- I'm not doing it to get attention like I need attention I ain't, I'm, you know what I mean I, I don't need that I'm doing it for myself to make myself feel better mm. fill me with confidence so is that anything that I want to attack I have the same mindset and if I win I I, I know why but if I fail I know I did everything that I can Has it changed the way you walk on a stage? I know for me if I don't have a nice pair of shoes and a fancy jacket on I don't have confidence does this give you an extra confidence or is it totally irrelevant when it comes to the act? I think yeah I think it is it is important uh, to walk on stage feeling confident because you want them to relax instantly around you. I think when I was back in 2010 when I was in Dirty Dancing, I was like 14 stone. Wow. And now I'm like, I'm like 11. You know, I was in a comfortable position and I was married. I had like a, a life I was comfortable in. Right. Good money and I was in a show. I was in the West End. Life was good. I was comfortable. But then even when you are single, you know, you feel like you look as good as you do, you know, something can go wrong somewhere along the line. Mm. It doesn't matter how you look, it's all about what you feel about you. You know, it's called self-esteem. As soon as you get that in your head and you know what you're about and you know what you're worth, you can go out and do whatever you want. You can con- you can do whatever you like. And you talk about the confidence you had during Dirty Dancing. Where are you at in your life now? Are you 100% happy with your look and your body? Are you 100% happy with your life? Where are you at? I don't, I'm, I'm one of those people, I'm never satisfied. I always want bigger and better. I never want to step back. You know, I always strive for the best and that's just the way I am. Nobody's perfect at all. You know, I always thought to myself, I want to be good at everything. Hmm. I want, you know, and if I'm good at everything, people will accept you. You can do everything. Um, I hear that and I've had a lot of stars tell me that in the past but my only fear with that is that you never qualify and you never quite make it in your own head whereas from my perception you've got an amazing body you've got an amazing career and an amazing voice what more do you want? It can be sort of self-defeating can't it when you have that keep pushing and pushing? Sometimes yeah but I look at it like that you can learn something new every day whether it be something you've never tried before something you didn't even know existed and it could be anything you know not just about career or anything it could be in life you could just see a plant you've never seen before or I don't know yeah. you know so for me it's like going out there and pushing yourself and striving yourself to be better can only be good and of course I've got a son and I want him to see me do well I want him to be proud of me I want him to look up to his dad and go wow I want to be that guy you know what I mean how old is he now it's, he's four and it's all about being that role model for him you know I wouldn't have it any other way 
I was talking to Shane yesterday. He's just got uh, a new baby who's just about to crawl and it's getting the exciting bit. I guess at four, you can have a proper conversation and it can be thrilling because it's a proper human being who's got feelings and can answer back. Yeah, absolutely. Not obviously, me and his mum aren't together anymore and that's tough. You know, you take that on the chin. Um, at the end of the day, you know, no matter what happens, go moving forward. You know, you, sh- you should always look up at me and look to me and I want to be that role model. I owe it to him, I owe it to myself, and uh, that's why I, I go and do what I do, you know? There's no losing in my mind. I, all, I, all I see is win. <laughs> I get that. Equally, I wonder whether you see yourself as a success. Do you think you've got a great voice? Because, as I say, perception from my no. side seems different from no. yours. I don't think I've got the best voice. I've, I'm not a natural singer. I've had a few singing lessons when I was a kid. I had a, you know, a year of it, but I haven't had a singing lesson since. It's like playing the guitar. Somebody learning to play the guitar themselves. Mm. Unless they do it when they're a kid, like Ed Sheeran's done, sound. But if, you, if I started doing it now, there's no way I could get to that level. You know, I started singing, the last thing I did was start singing. But you equally appreciate that you wouldn't be booked for some of the biggest pantomimes in the country, some of the biggest musicals in the country, booked for the West End, unless you were very good. You appreciate that. Oh, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I know uh, whatever you put in front of me, I'll, I'll do it. I'll make sure you go, wow, that was great, that. <laughs> Yeah. I won't have anything less than perfect, but again, that's my trade, not 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 people, not life, not anything else. That, you know, you can't predict that. Is it tiring being a perfectionist? Because I guess in this game, you're never going to achieve it because there'll always be somebody bigger, better, richer, more successful with slightly bigger muscles, on more money, on Big Brother or something like that. It, it's a tough game to be a perfectionist, isn't it? Of course, but if you constantly compare yourself to other individuals, you're never going to be perfect, are you? You've got to love yourself first before anybody else. And in terms of moving forward, have you found love again? I know it was difficult for you after the split. No, no, I, you know, I, I haven't. I suppose I'm not even looking for it, you know what I mean? Feelings are hard to measure from another individual. Is it hard to trust again? Is that one of the problems? All that type of feeling can get in the way of certain things. In my mind, I, I, the way that an artist works, you can be here, you can be whatever, and you can write a song about it like Adele you know you get over it and then you look at her now I think life takes you know amazing different ways you meet different people but it's the path you choose that defines you nobody else and sometimes somebody you know another person another individual can make you choose a different path because you think do you understand what I mean? I do I, I'm just curious though because from an ugly guy's point of view that doesn't have stardom I wonder how you go from what you were to what you are now and then find someone who you can believe is actually into you as a human being not just the 100%. facade or the showbiz that's tough isn't it? 100% yeah yeah that is tough yeah but you, you know you just gotta be with about you you know what I mean? And I guess it's not all bad. I mean, being 28 and still being at the top of your game, there are many options open to you. I don't know. I, I guess so. Um, I'd rather have the options open than my career, though. So that's why I try and open up my mind to what it is I can achieve. You seem a very spiritual person and a deep person. Have you worked on that a lot, sort of mental well-being and stability? I think I don't. I wouldn't say I'm like spiritual because you know I'm. I, I don't go church, I ain't religious, you know what I mean? But I believe I believe in your mind, you, you know, what? Yeah, it's a powerful thing. Mm. Emotions are a very powerful thing. Feelings are a very powerful thing. And, you know, another individual can change that or another thing in your life, like a, anything can change that. A pet can change that, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. You go like, oh, I can't, do that. I can't do that because I need to do that first, do you know what I mean? I don't know, it's, I, I have worked on it. I, I guess it's just come with experience. I mean, I, I know I'm not the oldest of guys and I haven't been through everything. What I, Maybe I haven't been through half of what somebody else has been through, but at my age, I feel like I've been through enough to, to, to know, you know, you learn something every day and I learn something new about myself all the time. Right. And I guess the love for that baby, there's no way of explaining it or defining it. Oh, that's, you know, that's it, 100%. He's my little world, you know what I mean? And I think that changes your perception again on life when you have a child, it does. Yeah. I guess putting somebody new in the mix also is, is a problem there because you've got to make sure it's the right choice because there are other people involved. Oh, 100%. You can't, I can't think about myself anymore. And I wouldn't, as long as I, I, know, I know myself. And I'm his dad and I'm me and I do my thing and I'm happy. 
I think you're incredibly talented. As I say, I saw you all those years ago back in Greece and you stole the show there as you continue to do in everything you're in. A star in Panto this Christmas, you're going to be back in Liverpool at the Echo Arena. Big gig yeah. that, isn't it? Yeah, it's the little, the, well, the little, I would say, little, it's, it's the auditorium based inside the Echo Arena. It's beautiful. It's all like brand new, stunning. He did a Panto over there at East End. and it went down a storm. That's why they're doing it for Christmas to see how it goes. But the interest is already incredible. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a good laugh again. It's only two weeks, so it's it's a short little run. Right up until the day of Christmas. Get everybody down there, families. It's just, you know, what I live for. And then, uh, obviously, I go into the wedding singer next year till October. So keep your head above water and keep going end off <laughs> yeah. no, and it's fantastic you're still doing that I saw that on Broadway years ago they did it over here and it wasn't quite as good this is a new production of it it's a really great film that and I hope they, they do it justice because it's it's a fantastic sort of 80s feel great music perfect for you really it's not that dissimilar to Greece actually is it no well I'm playing like the bad guy I'm playing Gangulia, which is not like the he's like the the bad guy, I guess. So uh, it'll be fun to play that role for sure. Um, I need a bit, a bit of that in my life. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I'm too nice. Because I just remembered she's Julia Gulia, isn't she, in the end? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, exactly. It's a great film. We're using the set from Broadway. It's going to be a massive production. You know, I know the amount of work, effort, money, the lot that's going into this production is on another level. Um and the cast you've got together is fantastic. Um, and I'm just proud to be a part of it. I'm looking forward to seeing it myself, to be honest. And we start rehearsals in January, opening in Feb. And uh, yeah, and I, I know I, I wouldn't put myself in a position where I didn't think it was going to be good. Um, so I have full faith that it's going to be fan- fantastic. And what can go wrong with 80s music and... Uh, you know razzle dazzle night why not yeah and it's fun uplifting show feel good nonsense which we need right now absolutely mate with all this going on in the world you need a little break from it (laughs) and uh, what better to do that than come and see that and just let yourself go take your memories back to the 80s take your memories back to all those years ago you know Um, not even that long ago to be fair but the world's changed dramatically since then Uh, so to get out there and have a laugh is great. And as well, for me, like the, because they know of my dance background, there's going to be a massive dance uh, number for me, which is I'm really excited. So uh, uh, I'm sure I'll lose even more weight because of <laughs> the amount of dance I'll be doing in that show. Don't so. get too obsessed with that stuff because you look great. And I, sp- I see all these guys in the gym who are staring in the mirror 13 hours a day. And I think to myself, there's got to be a point where you're done. When will you be done? When will you be good enough? When will you be perfect? Or is that impossible? It's impossible. You can't, you know, these lads get too obsessed with themselves and go, well, I want this this peck big, I want this muscle big, I want that shape. Uh, and then that can make an individual too selfish to even let anybody else in right. on it, uh, uh, to enjoy it. And I think um, as long as you feel good, you're slim, your clothes fit better, you don't need to be cut up, you don't need to be massive, you don't need to be, there's no need for it. It, it's not going to enhance your life. It's just going. It's just it's, you're going to have to change your clothes. It's going to cost you more money. Because <laughs> you know? I do look at my dad, and I think his generation. I'm 36 now, but my dad's generation didn't waste their time worrying about this stuff. It is a very 2016 thing, isn't it? That yeah, guys are worried about this stuff. They didn't think about any of that. And now my mum and dad have been together 47 years. What There's does no that selfish tell coming involved. There's no self-centered, selfish. Thing. It didn't even enter their head. No. It may have happened every now and again, but it was you got through it because you talked to each other. You didn't have a phone in front of you on the table. You didn't put the take your phone down on your table as soon as you sit down at a meal. You know, we, we didn't have Google Maps. We used a map. We used a piece <laughs> of paper. You know, uh, and, and uh, you know, my son now he even knows how to use an iPad. You know, we got him an iPad. He knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. That scares me, man. Go out, get your knees dirty, pick up a stick. Yeah. You know kick a bit of poo on the floor that's what I did yeah do you, you know have I mean? that rule about no phones at the table and all that it's really important I think I can't stand it I hate yeah. it I hate people in my company on the phone yeah I give you the two look rule if you look at your phone more than twice during my meal I stand up and walk out because I think if I'm that boring I'm going to go somewhere else <laughs> 
yeah. Hey, listen, it's great to talk to you. I've got huge respect for you. Ray Quinn is back on tour, starting in Yeovil from the 3rd of September through Preston, Blackpool, Billingham, Wolverhampton, New Brighton. And, of course, with the boys getting his stop off, let's hear it for the boys. We'll be in uh, Blackpool at the Village Hotel. And the tour continues through until uh, the 18th of November at Weatherby when you'll be going into Panto. And next year, at the Wedding Singer. You're a huge talent and you're continually in work. And for that, I give you great respect. Ray, great to talk to you again. Oh, nice one, mate. Pleasure. My pleasure.